Hey, LHS. Welcome back to the Friday show. A piece of advice before we start. Don't dye your hair before you use the green screen in a video. Yeah. In case anyone missed a football game against Griffith last Friday. Here's all you guys need to know about that in this next segment. So you guys were able to level out your record to 2-2. Two and two. Uh, What do you believe went well out there last week? I think last week we played with a lot more effort than we have the past few games. I think we put a lot of things together this week that we haven't in the past. So I think it was an overall good week. Um, I think we came out. Brought the intensity. Uh, the last few games we haven't, kind of, we've kind of started slow. So I think we did a good job bringing the intensity in the first half and just getting the job done. Uh, overall, I think we did what we were supposed to do. We came out and executed our game plan, and we took it to the Panthers. So, are you guys confident in your ability to beat the Brickies in Hobart this week? Yeah, uh, Hobart. We've lost to them a couple of years in a row now. They're kind of like becoming a rival of ours, and I. I think it'll be a pretty good, big game, and we're gonna, I think we'll win, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're pretty confident. Our coaches put in a good game plan this weekend, and this week we're going to practice hard, and we should be able to execute and come out and beat the Brickies. Yeah, uh, the Brickies were a state contender team last year, but honestly we've been game planning them for a while, so I think we'll have a really good chance of coming out and showing them what Low Red Devil football is. Uh, you guys have five more games in the regular season. What do you predict your record to be? I think we definitely can be 7-2 and two if we keep playing our game, playing Red Devil football and playing hard, and I think it'll be a pretty good season, finish out 7-2. and two. Um, Our record right now is 2-2. Two and two. I hope and I think we have a good chance of making it 7-2 and two, as long as we keep playing how we can play and we play to our potential every week. The Brickies, they have a freshman quarterback starting this year. How do you feel like you compare to him? Uh, well, just because he's a freshman doesn't mean we can overlook him, but I do believe I have more experience than him and we should be able to come out tomorrow and uh, beat the Brickies. All right, make sure you guys come out this Friday at Hobart and support the team at 7 o'clock. I ever wondered if your style is good? Have you ever wanted to know? Well, now, thanks to Jimmy Snow and Jacob Kissel, there's a chance you could find out. Hey guys, I'm Jimmy Snow. I'm Jacob Kissel. And today we're going to be doing drip checks. Alright guys, we're here with uh, Joe Golish. We're going to be rating his drip. For the accessories, what do you think, Kiss? I don't see a whole lot of accessories. Sorry. Nothing much. Sorry. We're going to have to give the accessories a low grade. The shoes, though? Those are the Jordan ones. They're kind of fire. The white and blue and black colorway. Very, very drippy. And his clothing, he's going with like a, a blue tint. Nice little dark, matches the shoes. I like it. Yeah, honestly, I'm gonna have to give you seven out of 10 on drip. Today we're here with Dylan Hawkbaum. First, style and accessories. I think the one AirPod and the fit all match each other, nice white and black. He's got a mask that matches his jeans, really a put together mask outfit. Yeah, it's looking good. Shoes, shoes match the fit, nice, nice white. They're a little, a little rough, but they, they're looking good. Your shoes gotta match your shirt or your sweatshirt. It just, you see it right here, the shoes and the sweatshirt matching, it makes the fit well put together and then it almost does a pattern with the mask and the jeans matching and for this what are you thinking uh, i give it a solid eight out of ten eight out of ten this guy's drip is obviously a zero his locker is uh unlocked we're here with aiden harder all right first category style accessories the nice headphones he's got the chain are those yeah yeah He's got, the, he's got the Gucci glasses. Chain. And the gold chain. You know. the, the Apple Watch too. The Apple Watch is cracked, but it's alright. Still drippy. For the shoes. Prestos. What are they? The Prestos. The Prestos. <laughs> They're a little dirty. They're like yeah, mid-condition, but... It's a lazy fit. The beaters, yeah. And the clothing overall. Nice classic. Gymshark with the Nike pants. 
goldfish. What do you think of this? Oh, the goldfish? Yeah, the goldfish. I think that deserves extra points for the goldfish. I think it, I think it all blends nice together. I think I give this a solid nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Yep. Beautiful. Has been feeling down the dumps recently. Well, here's a segment that Alec made to bring some light into your life. Good day is a really good day. It is. There's all kinds of negative news in this world, and there's never anything positive taken to mainstream media. That doesn't mean that it's all negative. My name is Alec McGuire, and today I am bringing you your daily dose of positive news. Whether you like dogs or cats, we can all say that this first story is definitely a positive one. Zoe, a deaf 15-year-old lab mix, had wandered away from home and had gotten lost. Thankfully, though, the whole community in this part of Arlington, Texas, had set out to find her. Neighbors looking for her had heard dog sounds, but weren't sure where they were coming from. After two days, city water crews were tearing apart the pavement searching for Zoe when they had found her in a muddy storm drain. Thankfully, Zoe was rescued and her owners were very happy to hear this. There's no better place to find a story for this show than the library. At the University of Nottingham's George Green Library, a mama duck and her five little ducklings had waddled their way into the library. One student had said, you often come across ducks in really weird places around campus but that was definitely the oddest place I've seen them. Thankfully, Mama Duck said quack, 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 and every single little duck came waddling back. There's all kinds of positive news out there. Just gotta keep your head up high and you'll find it. My name is Alec McGuire, and I remind you to focus on the good things no matter how small. I'll see you next time. Are you bored searching for a show to watch on Netflix? Well, we have a solution just for you. Here's Lily and Rebecca's segment about what to watch. Hey guys, I'm Lily. And I'm Rebecca. And today we are going to be talking about five Netflix shows that we think are worth a watch. We are not going to be ranking them because they're all different genres. I have adopted six children. Gifted with abilities far beyond the ordinary. I give you the Umbrella Academy. First off, we have the Umbrella Academy. Netflix says, years after they rose to fame as young crime-fighting superheroes, the estranged Hargreaves siblings come together to mark their father's death. This is a show that you can watch with your family, but there are some parts where it is not okay for kids. This is also a show where the second season is better than the first. I'm not saying that the first season is bad, I just think the writing is better in the second. I also think whoever was in charge of casting and the soundtrack did a great job. Next up, we have All American. Spencer James, Billy Baker, varsity coach, Beverly High. Beverly Hills, huh? Yes, sir. I've had my eye on you. You got strong hands. You match up well against single coverage. I need you to come play for me. All American is a show that after accepting Coach Bill Baker's offer to play football for Ritzy Beverly High, Crenshaw teen Spencer James struggles to fit in at the new school. Regardless of what people may think about this show, it is not all about football. It includes love and relationships and family, gang wars, enemies. There's life obstacles. There's great life lessons. And it's just a great show. Next, we have New Girl. I'm tired of living with my friend. She's a model. All her friends are models. How soon can you move in? Actually, no. Schmidt, slow no. down. No offense, you know, but we barely know you. I'm uh, kind of emotional right now because of the breakup. After breaking up with her cheating boyfriend, school teacher Jessica Day moves in with three single males, a bartender, a womanizer, and a personal trainer. To me, it kind of has the same vibe of friends with it being about a friend group who hangs out a lot and they all live in the same apartment. There's a lot of awkward humor in the show. There's also a little drama for those who just want a lighthearted show without too much to think about. This is personally one of my favorite shows, and I think most of you will like it too. Next up, we have Lucifer. Hey boss. Remember me? Can I have your autograph? Pull yourself together.
Bored with being the Lord of Hell, the devil relocates to Los Angeles, where he opens a nightclub and forms a connection with a homicide detective. This show has a lot of crime fighting and unexpected lessons and points of views, but however, it also has a lot of romance and betrayal and friendships. This show is funny, but also serious and fun to watch. This show has a slow start, but once you get into it more, it's a really interesting show. Next up, we have Stranger Things. Something is coming. Something hungry for blood. What is it? The oh. Demogorgon! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have to go. Later. See you tomorrow. When a young boy vanishes, a small town uncovers a mystery involving secret experiments, terrifying supernatural forces, and one strange little girl. Stranger Things is fun. It's exciting to watch. There aren't many people who haven't seen it, but for those who haven't, there's a lot of paranormal stuff, relationships, friendships, and just it's a really good show. There's comedy, romance, mystery, sci-fi, horror, thriller. It's a mix of all those, and it's a really good show. Now, this has been five Netflix shows that we think are worth a watch. I'm going to be just like Izzy here and know the background of the game before you play it. <laughs> <laughs> then watch this segment called Try It With Wyatt, where today he's testing out The Walking Dead VR. Welcome to VR. Pretty nice. This is my humble abode, by the way. So today, playing some Walking Dead, man. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. So, like, I've already played like a good amount of it. Like, I've already, like, I've already played like a few of the tasks already. I think I'm on like day four or five. I don't know why my base is in a cemetery and an abandoned bus. That's that's one of the things I don't get. It's just like the base they give you. But, um, there's the moon. I just stored something. Um, real quick, got a knife, pistol. Probably shouldn't be flipping it, but eat some, eat some ramen noodle. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Ooh, come on. Got some junk here. Excuse me. Kind sir. Can you show me where the local Walmart is? Sir? Alright, I'm just gonna... Oh! Oh, that's so gross. I'm so sorry. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna leave you there and... Okay. Uh, excuse me, sir. 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 Sorry. I recorded like a few days ago, but like the audio is really bad, so I'm like re-recording. I almost got like, like literally destroyed by a horde too. Oh shoot. Uh. Uh. Okay. Sorry. Oh, I missed. I missed again. I missed again. I missed again. Ah! Shh. Hopefully you didn't see me. Climb the cover. Dude! Man. Maybe I like lose interest or something. I like girls, buddy. Breath in Twitch. Whoa! Nancy! Don't scare me like that, man. You have very beautiful eyes. Housekeeping, housekeeping, housekeeping. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> Don't mind if I do. Hey man, it's the apocalypse, alright? 3818. Now, I hate to spoil any, uh, People who haven't seen The Walking Dead. <sighs> but one of my favorite characters is a guy called Negan. 
Let's just say, if you know, you know. Now, wait a minute! Ugh, good old Lucio, huh? Am I right, or am I right? Oh, sorry, my, my bad. Oh, my bad. Oh, dude, dude. I'm sorry, dude. Oh, my gosh. That was disgusting. What's going on, Lowell High School? Making a commercial for Gamers Guild to let people know we don't just play Dungeons and Dragons. We play some other peculiar games. Yeah, we get play games like Munchkins or Splendor, which are really unique and fun to play. Also bringing in this game called Psycho Killer. It's a horror-based card game. It's pretty fun. It will be pretty fun if you guys join. We're also going to implement Beyblades this year which will be pretty funny. Uh, it's in Mr. Brandish's room for about an hour after school. Next week, we're having it on Friday. Normally, we have it on Thursdays, but we're having it on Friday. So, hope to see you guys there. All right, uh, Chess, we're back. Um, going to be interviewing people, seeing uh, who their favorite teacher is. Let's see it. What's up, guys? I'm here with Noah Smith. Noah, who's your favorite teacher this year? Uh, my favorite teacher this year is by far Mr. Kilmer. He's the best teacher out there and the best coach. Just a great guy all around. Today, I'm here with a good buddy, Max Reject. Max, who's your favorite teacher this year? Ooh, that's tough. Like, teachers I have or just mm -hmm. in general? Teachers this year, you oh, have. Favorite teacher I have is probably... Joe Mama. All right, guys, we're here with Caden. Ken, who's your favorite teacher this year? Ah, uh, favorite teacher? I would have to, I would have to say Swinford. I, I like Swinford. What does he teach? Uh, nothing. Uh, well, I'm stupid, so I'm in credit recovery. So uh, I'm just chilling in there. Nice yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. All right. Today we're here with Maddie Jers. Maddie, who's your favorite teacher? Mr. Brandish, 100%. Why? He's just so cool. Like, coolest guy I ever met. What's up, guys? We're here with Dan. Dan, who's your favorite teacher this year? Oh, God. Probably Mr. McClendon. Great choice. All right, guys. Today, we're here with... Trent Massey. Who's your favorite teacher, Trent? I would definitely have to say Mr. Swinford. What does she teach? Uh, math. How is it? It's not bad. Why is she your favorite teacher? I don't know. Because math. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right, guys, we're here with Hayden. Hayden, who's your favorite teacher this year? I know it's really hard to decide, but I have to go with Miss Smith. You know, she just got all the aspects. You know, she's a great teacher. She's real nice. You know, that's. Well, what does she teach? <laughs> Chemistry, honor specifically for me because you know I'm smart and all that. But yeah, she's she's a great teacher. She really knows her stuff. All right, guys, today we're here with uh, Jacob. Jacob, who's your favorite teacher this year? Uh, honestly, I'm gonna have to go with, bro. Uh, man, it's a good question, man. Um, I'm gonna have to go with LePage, bro. Why is that? She's pretty chill, and she, like, doesn't care what we do, usually. What's up, guys? We're here with Brayden today. Brayden, who's your favorite teacher? Uh, my favorite teacher is Mr. Butch. He's pretty cool. I know that we all loved Tame with Nadine, and we were all so sad to see her go, but thanks to Maddie and Caitlin, we can see some cool information about other animals every week. For those of you who watched the Friday show prior to this year, you might remember a certain segment known as Tamed with Nadine. Hey guys, welcome back to Tamed with Nadine. For today's episode, we will be checking out domestic mice. With the host Nadine, we speak about a variety of domesticated animals, but me and my friends want to take her idea to the next level, bringing things more to the wild side. Come and take a trip with the zoo crew. Now, to start this off, we reached out to a certain zoo about filming there and well as you can guess things went well they let us come in a little bit early to get a little bit behind the scenes footage and even an interview for all of you so what you're about to see here is an interview between me and one of the workers at the zoo so 
Hello, can you tell us your name and what exactly your job is here at Brookfield? Hi, yeah, I'm, I'm Andy Snyder. I'm the curator of herps and aquatics. So anything uh, reptile, amphibian, fish, or invertebrate is mine here. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have otters, which doesn't fit into any of the, <laughs> those categories, but they're, they're also mine. Um, so if it's not, basically, if it's not a mammal or a bird, it's under my purview. Interesting. So what exactly do you do here? What, if you could give us like a, basically a job description as your day-to-day, -day, uh, your day-to-day -day job here. Could you tell us a bit of what that is? Yeah, well, the curators are actually uh, responsible for the staff that takes care of the animals directly. And, that, and everything um, related to the animals themselves other than the actual day-to-day -day care. So uh, we work with the nutritionist on the nutrition of the animals, any uh, captive breeding programs, rearing of young, uh, animals coming in or going out of the zoo is our responsibility. Um, uh, their exhibitry, you know, their habitats, all of that comes under what would be my job. My job is more curatorial job these days is more administrative than anything because we have all that stuff to deal with. Um, so we don't get uh, as much time to work directly with the animals anymore, which is kind of a bummer because that's why we all got into the jobs to begin with. Okay, so what would you say is your favorite part of the job you get to have here at Brookfields? By far, uh, my favorite part is when I actually get to touch an animal. You know, <laughs> when I get to do something with an animal, um, it, it, it brings back memories and it's, it's something I feel I'm good at and, and something I enjoy a lot. Um, so yes, doing, doing the animal part of the job is by far the most fun. Um, and like I said, what most of us got into this profession for. Um, and, you know, the, the, the least favorite part is some of the administrative elements that have more to do with uh, people, you know, the, the employee things that have to be done and things like that, but no big deal. Yes, so there's some fun and there's also some work, but that's how all things are going to be. Absolutely. <laughs>
you know, their their strength was their run, and if we could control that, then, then they're going to we're going to make them do something they don't want to do, which led to our success. Now, with our new team, we're facing Hobart next week. We saw on their offense, they like running the ball with multiple different players, about six. How do you think your defense is going to respond to that? Well, they're going to have to play team defense. They're going to have to play as a unit. They're all going to have to run the ball, and they're going to have to do their individual job and trust, trust their brothers, trust their teammates, you know, to do theirs. All righty, Mr. Kilmer. Now, how do you think you're going to stop Hobart's passing attack? You know, again, we're going to have to get pressure. You know, they, they have a young quarterback. He's just a freshman, I believe, and, and we're going to have to put him in a position where he's uncomfortable. Uh, they've got great athletes. they got a nice little mojo going. You know, their state championship uh, run last year. Uh, so we're going to have to play physical. We're going to have to, to match up with their athletes and, and, and do our part to slow them down. Wonderful. Now, with our second win, and absolutely an amazing win, what is the mindset going into your f fifth game of the season? Well, you know, we open up with conference play, so from this point forward, every game is for a number on the board, which is that's, that's the number one goal, or number two goal. Number one's to win the, the leather helmet. Number two's put a number up on the, on the board. So we're going to have to come out and play. If, if we want to be considered a conference uh, contender, we're going to have to play like it. And we've worked hard this week. We prepared like we're conference contenders, and and we're just going to go out and have to put it on the line and see what happens. Now, for our defense and offense doing spectacular last week, I believe Hobart is in for a beating. Thank you, Coach Kilmer, for meeting with me. I'll see you on Friday. All righty. Now you've heard it from Kilmer himself. Hobart is going to be in for a slaughter. I'll see you Friday night at Hobart. Yes. Time to commit tax fraud. All right. All right. 13 dependents. Um, I got... Uh, zero property tax. I have three dogs. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Got a uh, new building, so gotta not pay income tax. Gotta not pay uh, land tax on that. Benji will never find me, I don't think. I think I'm getting away with this. Benji, we got a special case just for you. We need the best of the best for this. Nathan Mayerski of Lowell, Indiana. We found out he hasn't been doing tax fraud. So, you gotta do what you do best. Another one? I'll get him by the end of the week. This is the IRS. Open up, Mr. Mayerski. Nathan, really, don't worry about it. I didn't tell the IRS anything about any of the money you didn't pay in taxes. It's really no big deal to worry about. You're all good. <laughs> what are you gonna do to me? <laughs> Have a nice trip. But, thanks to Maddie and Caitlin, we can see some cool information about other animals every week. That was the show. Thanks for watching. And as always, stay safe and don't say your hey green when you join a radio TV class because that will happen. Yep. This was Izzy. And I'm Caitlin. And this was the Friday show. Goodbye.